All right, guys, this is the M16A1 <clears throat> from the United States Replica Gun Company. Uh, this is not a catalog item. This is a gun we will build on request. This particular gun was um, commissioned by a Vietnam reenactor who wanted the very best possible M16A1 replica, authentic in every detail. Um, we were very, very happy to build this gun and it's perfect. This is a Vietnam era M16. It is just absolutely perfect. Now this gun operates on our slide over principle like our M4 rifle. Uh, the guts of this gun are very much similar to the M4 rifle and um, we'll do a quick breakdown right now of those guts and then we'll go over uh, this, we'll go over this gun feature by feature. Okay, this gun, like our M4 rifle and all of our M16 AR-15 uh, type weapons, uh, functions exactly the way that, um, that the real ones do. Charging handle works, uh, spring-loaded ejection port dust cover works, the selector lever functions, we'll show you that. We'll show you the action too, because the guts on this thing um, are exact. All right, we've got the gun in semi, and I'm going to hold my finger on the trigger. Okay, you can see it functioning in semi-automatic. Now, in automatic, you should be able to hear this. So even the guts are the same on this thing. Now. Uh, again, everything on this thing works exactly like it should. The trap door in the buttstock opens. I think it opens a little bit easier than a real one. And it's big enough to actually put um, a real M16 cleaning kit in the buttstock if you so desire. This one actually opens a little bit easier than the, the real ones do. Um, the sights, the rear sights adjust. And again, they are not um, not adjustable for elevation. This is not an E3 sight. Remember, this is a 1969 era M16. The front sights are adjustable, uh, and the gun strips just like the real one. And we'll show you that. The bolt carrier and the charging handle come out. I'm not going to take it out it comes out. And the gun buttons up again perfectly. So you could use this uh, for display and to, to, to demonstrate how these things uh, break down for cleaning. Now as far as demonstration go, you can also show the, um, the gas tube system which is interesting to illustrate and the heat shield on the inside of the plastic handguard. Now you can see this gas tube is long and thin just like the original one and I'll tell you what, you get one crimp in this gas tube and, um, and you're screwed. You no longer have a weapon. So you take care of this and it's uh, you know something interesting to, uh, to demonstrate when you're showing off the gun. Now hopefully I can get this back in fairly easy because sometimes these D-rings are a bit stubborn, uh, just like the real ones. Takes quite a bit of quite a bit of pressure. There we go. The real ones require uh, a wrench. Now, with this particular gun, uh, we've included a sling. This is actually a Vietnam era sling. Uh, we don't normally stock slings for this. We happen to have one. Uh, lying around and we enjoyed building this project uh, uh, so much we just threw it in. We also added a couple of special features too. One, uh, we were asked about the mags, um, changing magazines, so we made these mags not just drop free but super drop free. I mean they just pretty much shoot out of there. Um, also we added a heavier spring to the buffer. So when you rack that bolt back, it, it slams home with some authority. Um, now, 
This gun has some unique features and we'll start at the beginning. The uh, flash hider is the three prong flash hider, sometimes called the duck bill flash hider. The barrel is the skinny barrel. Again, all, um, uh, all parts that were on the original M16. Two piece, the right and left triangular handguard. The upper receiver has the carrying handle that's integral. It is not removable. This is not a flat top. Remember, this is an M16. We were so familiar with the flat tops and the removable carrying handle of the M4. This is not one of those. This is the old school M16. This is the A1 with the forward bolt assist, but it has the correct uh, paddle style uh, forward bolt assist. Now, this buttstock, you probably wouldn't notice the difference between an M16 buttstock and an M16A1 buttstock, but the buttstock design was just a little bit different. It's almost like there was a notch cut out here. It was shaped a little bit different to allow your hand to fit in there just a little bit better. Uh, this is the M16A1. And again, this thing is perfect in every way. This is a museum quality replica. You're never going to find an M16A1 that looks as good as this. And on that note, I do want to mention that this is not a Denix made M16. There is no similarity between this gun and the Denix M16. That's a good decorator model if you want to hang something on the wall, yeah, that's fine. But this is a museum quality piece. It is full size, full weight. And on that note, when I say full weight, that is to say it is light, and this thing feels like a toy. I mean, it feels light. It is a very handy carbine, and it just feels um, it feels good in the hands. I mean, um, you know, say what you want about the M16's reliability. The ergonomics are fantastic. The gun feels really, really good um, uh, in the hand. It points instinctively. Um, anyway. This is really a historically significant military rifle, and even though uh, you may feel like this gun was made by Mattel, um, it has a, a it has a definite place in history and in the history of military firearms. And on that note, I just want to mention this about the Mattel thing. I've heard from I've heard from veterans that. Uh, this gun was made by Mattel. The plastic on it was made by Mattel. Um, Mattel Toy Corporation had absolutely nothing to do with this gun. Absolutely nothing. They didn't make the plastic furniture on it. They didn't make the gun. It had nothing to do with it. And yet I still hear that myth um, propagated today. And here's the deal. This is where it came from. In 1966, Mattel Toy Corporation made a, a toy, I'm not going to say a replica, they made a toy M16. It was called the M16 Marauder. You can Google it. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to describe it. Uh, but the, the rifle itself looked a lot like an M16, although I think more like an AR-10. Anyway, that M16 Marauder was very, very realistic for the day as far as toy guns went for kids. Now, I know because I had an M16 Marauder. My father bought me one in 1966. And I love that thing. I played with it to death uh, in the backyard. Um, it's a wonderful gun, and people put two and two together and got five at that time. Well, Mattel Toy Corporation made the M16 Marauder. It's called the M16. Um, it looks like the M16. They must have had something to do with the gun. They had nothing to do with the gun. That's just that. Um, Incidentally, you can actually see an M16 Marauder on film. Um, if you haven't seen the uh, movie The Green Berets, 1968 with John Wayne, you should. But uh, one scene, uh, the Duke picks up a rifle from a fallen Green Beret and smashes it against the tree so the enemy can't use the gun. The gun he smashes against the tree is actually an M16 Marauder. And you, you can see it's kind of funny looking. It doesn't really look like an M16, but it's an M16 Marauder. Anyway. Um, we also were charged with building a display base for this gun, and we had a little bit of latitude. Our customer said, uh, just build us something cool. So, we did. Um, we've got dummy ammo here. Uh, we've got places uh, for brass plaques, or, you know, I mean, you could 
glue sergeant chevrons or whatever you want there. If you want to personalize it, you could do that. You want to put a little brass plaque that says M16, that's fine. Uh, we also have a brick of uh, Vietnam era C4 here uh, attached to the base. And the bullets are epoxied to the base in such a way that they actually will hold in place the famous 1969 comic book uh, that was issued to troops on how to clean and take care of your new M16 rifle. Uh, all illustrations in this uh, um, uh, comic book, by the way, were done by the famous Will Eisner of Disney fame, the famous Disney illustrator, and this comic book uh, is famous. So we included one with the base, and uh, again, this is the M16A1 from the United States Replica Gun Company. It's absolutely perfect. It's very, very similar in design and operation to our M4 rifle, uh, as you might expect, and it is just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, Again, if you want a custom gun, give us a call. If it's for a museum, if it's for a private collection, um, if it's just to hang on your wall or keep in your office, let us know and we'll build it for you. We really care about these products and we are very knowledgeable. So never hesitate to ask us anything. Give us a call, shoot us an email info at replicaguns.com again with the United States Replica Gun Company and uh, this is our M16A1 rifle. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.